that's a good transition of what's going on in Florida. There you go. Let's put it up there on the screen. So this was a, ma a major case from the state Supreme Court. So they issued a ruling on Monday that will allow state voters actually to decide whether to protect abortion and also whether to legalize recreational use of marijuana. This rejected the state attorney general argument that the measure should be kept off of the November ballot. Now, I'll let you guess why they want to keep uh, that off of the November ballot. The court had not ruled on the on the merit of the measure, only whether they meet the requirement for clarity and don't violate the state constitution mandate that they cover only one subject. That came when the state actually upheld the current legislative ban on most abortions after 15 weeks of presidency, and state lawmakers then tightened that ban to six weeks while that issue is still before the court. Monday, however, makes it so that this will pave the way for the six-week ban to definitely go into effect, but now to give Florida to voters the right and the ability to decide said measure at the state ballot box. So I actually cannot think of a worse possible outcome for the Republicans in the state because now you have legal weed, you have abortion, the most potent political issue of our lifetime, and you have a restrictive six-week ban go into effect, Crystal, in mm -hmm. the interim between now and election day. So 15 weeks, look, I think a lot of people can stomach 15 weeks. The polling on it is shift, but previously, Europe and a lot of other countries, that's where they are. I think that's fine. But six weeks, that's a lot more restrictive. That's a lot more in line with Alabama, Georgia, and some of these other states. It's much more directional towards that. It's actually very, a very, very small amount of public opinion. You put legal weed on top of that, and then you have the restriction come in on top of the overwhelming like the ability to come to the ballot box and to change your vote and to change that policy which you hate and at the same time why don't you just mark d while you're there i mean i can't think of a greater gift to joe biden well it's very motivating for yeah. um any sort of democratic supporters because right. it you know it was very clear that there is a significant amount at stake and you know important for them to show up and express their opinion on this yeah you know, i was just re recalling the numbers from the last election um Trump got 51.2% in the state of Florida. Biden got 478 so it's not like it was a total blowout. Yeah, that's right. It's not like it's preposterous to imagine that Florida could go back in the Democratic column. Now, I don't even really necessarily want Florida to be a swing state because the <laughs> Cuban politics there have screwed up our, you know, relationship and our policy vis-a-vis -vis Cuba for, you know, decades and decades at this point. So I'm not even that excited about the idea that Florida could come <laughs> back into being a critical swing state. But if anything was going to make it possible, it would be this abortion initiative. Now, let's recall that last time around, there was a ballot initiative to lift the minimum wage, and there were some other uh, Democratic-leaning or left-leaning ballot initiatives that passed handily, even as Donald Trump won a historic victory in the state. Good point. So the fact that you have a ballot initiative that goes in one direction and voters that go in another direction in terms of the party, no one should find that a crazy idea or put that out of um, the, the possibility whatsoever. Although I do think the abortion issue, there is more fervent emotion around that at this point than there was like around the That's minimum wage last time around. And the support for the pro-choice position on this ballot initiative based on the polling is massive. The support for legalizing weed also quite high. Uh, and, you know, we've seen the way that abortion has shaped not only ballot initiatives, which the pro-choice position has won in every single state where it's been tested, including places like Kentucky, but we've also seen the way that abortion and other women's issues related to that have completely shifted different, you know, state legislative districts, congressional districts, et cetera, towards Democrats. So it does have a very potent impact even on, you know, people's choice of candidates outside of specific ballot initiatives. The polling on this is genuinely shocking in the state of Florida. Let's go and put this up there on the screen. So it says that over 60% of Florida voters both support the abortion and marijuana amendments. But actually, when you dig into it, it's even more interesting. 62% of voters said that they would vote yes on the abortion ballot measure, in, meaning that they want to keep uh, the right to abortion on the uh, in the state, but more than half of Republicans 
actually in the state said that they would vote affirmatively. When you go to weed, it's actually roughly the same number, 55% of Republicans expressing support and 67% support overall. Independent voters splitting dramatically in both of those directions, 68, 9% on the weed issue, 58% on abortion. So you've got independent Republicans and Democrats, you got majorities in all three of these coalitions that are gonna come out in favor. As you said, let's be real. The, the minimum wage position passed with over 60%. Last time, Trump was still able to win. But this time around, if you have Biden tie himself to pro-choice uh, in, in a way that neither candidate did previously with minimum wage, I do think it will have a significant more chance. Now, don't get me wrong. I think Trump is probably still gonna win the state. But yeah. this is just one of those, like, spending money where we shouldn't have to be spending money. It makes it yeah. a, at least a little bit interesting. Yeah, exactly. Whereas previously, it was not in, the state of Florida was not interesting at all. You know, one of the things that has been extraordinary to watch in the wake of Roe versus Wade being overturned and the Dobbs decision is the way that the pro-choice position has become more and more and more popular. It's not like people had their pre-existing views and they just were locked into them and then now it's the pro-choice side that's just more energized. No, you've seen a dramatic public shift towards the pro-choice position. And also, it didn't all happen at once. It's continued to trend in that direction. Um, when Sagar was out, Emily and I actually covered mm -hmm. some of the polls with regards to that, that there's a continual trend towards the pro-choice direction. That has basically shaken loose what was a 50-50 divide for decades on this issue, where it really just depended, you know, which side seemed to be more extreme at the moment. Now you have a very clear majority in favor of the more pro-choice side, and you have a dwindling minority in a very small minority that's in favor of you know, the most extreme positions like a complete national ban right. or abortion being illegal in all or most circumstances. There is a very, very small minority that supports that position at this point. So that's been one of the things that's been extraordinary as well, because I think pre-Dobbs, if you had asked Republicans what they thought about a ballot initiative like this, I don't think there's any chance you'd have a majority on the pro-choice side. So that has been um, a pretty dramatic and, and honestly a shift that I did not anticipate yeah. in the wake of that decision. I didn't anticipate that this would be such a central issue driving so many electoral results in basically every state across the country still now you know, a significant amount of time out from that decision. So um, Republicans, you know, they're, they're in a very, uh, really hard bind here. We've seen the way that Trump has tried to navigate it. You know, he's trying to shift it back to that rhetoric they used to use about, oh, well, Democrats, you know, they favor these end of uh, late term abortions and, you know, even making up these scenarios of even after the baby's born, et cetera. But it just doesn't land when the landscape that is being the, that is being fought over right now is on where are the restrictions gonna lie. And so in a state like Florida, where you have a six week ban actually going into effect, so people are going to get to see what that looks like and hear the horror stories before they go vote. It's pretty potent. It's bad. It's bad. Let me just go one word of caution. Miami Beach, you guys were already, you were one of the strictest places in the, wor in the world, in America for weed. They actually just put in new measures to go against weed. So I would just, I would urge the voters of Miami Beach, if you want to protect your air down in that city, you may want to think <laughs> a little bit differently. Uh, let's put this last part up on the screen because this is another flashing red sign. And then, look, this is the other thing too, Crystal. We shouldn't erase this. It's actually very possible. I would say within the realm of possibility that Biden could win the state of Florida. It went from Trump plus three to then DeSantis plus what, 20? But that was only two years ago. We don't know. And here in front of us, we have House special election where the Democrats actually flipped a Republican Florida House seat in central Florida on, uh, this was just what, a couple of months ago. So we have to be real here. This was on January 30th in 2024. Abortion politics, as you just said, has shifted so rapidly and wildly that it's actually pretty difficult to really get a sense of where things will land. The polls were totally off in the Democratic direction on the uh, in, in 2022. Nobody anticipated the DeSantis blowout. They thought he would win by 10. It ended up winning by 20. Well, then in this case too, we shouldn't underestimate that such rapidly shifting parts of the coalition, as we saw in 2016, as we saw in 2022, are so difficult to poll that you really won't find out till election day. Biden's highest approval ratings are among the elderly. Yeah, true. They don't really, by yeah. and large, have an issue Boomers. with his Israel policy. Yeah. So, hey, you never know, guys. Yeah.
Yeah. You never know. Crazier things have certainly happened in our politics. That's, there you go. Yeah, <laughs> we have no idea. Hey guys, if you like that video, go to breakingpoints.com, become a premium subscriber and help us build the best independent media organization on the planet. That's right. We're subscriber funded. We're building something new. We want to replace these failing mainstream media organizations. So again, to subscribe, it's breakingpoints.com.